Um, yeah, Tom Brady's the MVP. He's better than Rodgers. My fucking ass. Welcome back, everybody, to We Are Viewing Sports. My name is James Irvin, and the Saints just put the defense performance down the year, shutting out Tom Brady for the first time since 2006, where he faced the Miami Dolphins. Who was the coach of that Miami Dolphins team? Nick Saban. Greatest college football coach of all time. But... This has huge implications. Number one, this gives the Cowboys a chance for the one seed. Number two, the Buccaneers may be a four seed. And then we get Bucks rams potentially in the playoffs. And with the Cardinals lost to the Lions, the Rams may get a division, so we may get Bucks cardinals Either way, a lot has happened, and this solidifies the Green Bay Packers' number one seed. Out of all, think of all the great offensive players that played in this game. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, who tore his ACL in this game, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones. Uh, on the Saints side, Kamara. You had Taysom Hill, who isn't great. But the best overall offensive player to play this game, Marquez Callaway. Six receptions, 112 yards. After that, it was defense, defense, defense. In fact, special teams, the kicker for the Saints was the best because he scored all the points at this game. It was nine Nothing was your final defensive game of the year. And you know what? With well pleasure. Tom Brady was sacked four times. Cameron Jordan was really unblockable. It looks like freaking Aaron Donald out there. And Cameron Jordan's really good. So that's top five. And CJ Gardner Johnson. Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Had a pick. And in fact, had the had the little thing to Brady like that. He just smiled his face. Tom Brady went over and told the coach to shut the fuck up. Um, and Tom Brady couldn't do nothing. Cameron Jordan even forced a fumble because Tom Brady tried to run and fumble. What's this mean for the Saints? Well, they needed this win to get a wild card spot because the Niners are coming on, the Vikings are coming on strong, even though I think the Saints are better than the Vikings. Um, the Vikings are coming on strong for that wild card run, and of course that NFC West team, they're going to be the Rams or the Cardinals. It's going to be a playoff team. Shoot, the Niners are going to be a playoff team. So the first three spots. But you still have the Rams yet to play. We don't know how that's going to affect them. Everything else. In fact, this whole COVID thing is throwing off my entire video schedule. Because today is supposed to pretty much be top 10 NFL teams after the Monday Night Football game. And it would have been on Monday. Because neither the Vikings or the Bears are going to be a top 10 NFL team. But I couldn't because the Rams played. If it was just Washington and Philly, then it'd be fine. I could probably get a top 10 down Monday anyways. But with the Rams play, I got to see how that affects the top 10 team. But this entire game was insane it has huge playoff seating potential and it may it may have just given Aaron Rodgers his back-to-back -back MVP incredible game I mean I'm watching this after the Lions upset the Cardinals I'm like okay now we just need the Bucks to lose Tom Brady's kryptonite is the Saints in the regular season and he he hasn't looked good he threw that game losing pick six earlier to lose in the game and now this what a terrible performance by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, defense. Defensively, nine points. Usually, it's enough to win you a football game. Usually, they only score nine points. You usually win a football game, especially in today's day in the NFL. And they couldn't get anything done. Now, 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 now. Evans got hurt. Fournette got hurt. And Chris Godwin got hurt. But this also may have saved Antonio Brown's job because Antonio Brown, you know, was like, ah, well, you know, he's going to be cut. One more mistake, he's gone. They have Antonio Brown in this game. They probably win it because then it's Tyler Johnson. It wasn't a terrible option, but, you know, when you're double covering him every time because they can't. You just manned up the entire time and blitzed Brady, and they shut down the entire offense. Brady tried to run, which we know he's not good at, and he's been running quite well for Tom Brady, and then he fumbles. So he's probably not going to be running much more. The punter was the MVP for both sides of the game, I guess. 9 nothing. Taysom Hill just beat Tom Brady one-on-one. -on -one. Now in the playoffs, Brady got him back against Breeze. But four sacks, an interception, a fumble. Marquez Callaway was the leading offensive player with 112 yards. Taysom Hill didn't play that good. He ran the ball. He was their leading rusher, 33 yards. The Buccaneers' defense is good, and that's why I think they're still a top threat to this team, I mean, they didn't even have Sean Payton over there. The COVID stuff threw everything off for the Saints. And now, they did it. They shut out the Buccaneers and Tom Brady. All his weapons got hurt. It still shouldn't matter. You still probably should score some points against the Saints. If you're the GOAT, guess what Aaron Rodgers did without with his two best receivers out? MVS was out. 
Lazard had COVID. Adams had COVID. He was throwing to Randall Cobb, Juwan Winfrey, and then Tanya got hurt, so it was DeGuara. And he beat the undefeated Arizona Cardinals on the road. He couldn't even defeat the seven loss Saints. Aaron Rodgers right now is the MVP of the league. For someone who wasn't even going to be playing in Green Bay, now he is the MVP. But this game solidified how dominant a Saints defense can be and how dominant that Buccaneers defense can be. Everybody's just want to trash on Brady, which I just did for about two minutes. But they're still a top 10 team. They are still a top 10 team in the league. They're still going to win this NFC South. And they still have one of the most dominant defenses in the NFL. Sure, wasn't the greatest offense, but you shut down Alvin Kamara. Couldn't shut down Callaway. But they are a top team in the league. They have a great defense. They held the team to nine points. The offense couldn't do anything. It was a great defensive performance called by Brian, Blo Brian Bowles. Or Todd Bowles. And they couldn't get it done. They could not get it done. And the offense was shit. If you shut down this offense, and now Chris Godwin's done for the year, so you hope to get Mike Evans back at full strength. You hope to get Leonard Fournette back at full strength. Gronkowski was healthy, but he couldn't get anything done. I mean, what? No, no, Chris Godwin hurts. It really does. The defense should still be dominant, though. I don't think their offense is going to be as lethal as it was, because Chris Godwin's a huge part of that offense. But it's going to be Mike Evans. It's going to be a lot of Leonard Fournette. It's going to be a lot of Gronkowski. Buckets are still Super Bowl favorites. They're defending champs. They have a lot of weapons out there. I don't think this one loss should freak them out too much. But use that as a motivation, however. Show them what they need to be done. And maybe, you know, Tom Brady shouldn't destroy the Microsoft tablet. Either way, this is going to be a motivation. I think the Bucks are going to bounce back in a big way. They're still going to make the playoffs. And I still think they might be favorites to win the Super Bowl. Just right behind the Green Bay Packers in the NFC, who solidified a one seed, and as long as they don't lose out, they're good. But this means a lot for playoff seeding. Number one, Saints should probably get over the Vikings. It's going to be either two NFC West teams, probably with the Niners. And then this gives the Cowboys a huge, huge, huge chance to get the one seed, and the Dallas Cowboys getting the one seed could be amazing. For It's going to be amazing for Dallas. Home field advantage plus that bye week, it's going to be huge for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they get can clinch a division, too. Take the one seed over, and there you go. Put the Packers at the two seed. They'll face the seven seed. They're going to be probably be Saints or Vikings. And then you got to go through Dallas. You got to go through Dallas. The only thing that's going to hurt Dallas, though, is that Tampa Bay loss in week one. That week one doesn't matter, but with tiebreaker stuff, that week one game 1,000% matters. Also, it means the Saints have now beat the two top teams, probably the favorites, in the NFC. They beat the Packers in Week 1, and then they crushed the Bucks twice. So, there you go. Huge playoff seeding. We got tons of playoff seeding coming up. Top 10 NFL teams should be out tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a Merry Christmas. And you know what they say, playoff seeding is chaos. And you know what you root for, except for your favorite team, chaos. Amazing game, best defensive game of the year, and Taysom Hill just beat fucking old ass Tom Brady. Rodgers for MVP. Thank you for listening.